Have you ever come across a book cover that looks very similar to another book that you've seen? Have you ever confused two books thinking that they were what they weren't? Let's talk about that. Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name's Theo, thanks for stopping in. If you haven't already subscribed, please consider it. Today I'm just doing a super quick one. It's the weekend for me, I'm relaxing, I'm having a cup of coffee, and I just wanted to do kind of a fun one. I was scrolling uh, on the internet the other day and I came across a book cover that looked very similar to something I know that I've seen before. And it got me thinking about some covers that might look an awful lot like other books. And uh, and I wanted to compare some book covers just, just for fun. Just as a disclaimer, I don't mean to bash any author. I don't mean to talk bad or offend anyone. This is strictly an objective, fun comparison just to see how sometimes book covers can look an awful lot like each other. And it's much the same like music. We can only have so many notes and so many chords. And so sometimes if we continue to make music, we're going to eventually end up with some songs that overlap a little bit and some melodies that tend to sound similar. And part of the reason why I wanted to do this video as well is to introduce some other books and some other authors, even some indie authors that maybe you haven't heard of before, or maybe you wouldn't consider trying. And so if I can get them out there and uh, maybe stumble across some recommendations in the process of doing this video, then all the better. So again, this is just for fun, nothing meant by it, no offense to anybody, but I just wanted to kind of go over a couple covers that I thought looked similar. And I also want to say that if you've seen similar videos like this, I guarantee there are going to be a couple that you haven't seen, a couple comparisons I'm making that you haven't seen before. One or two are a little bit of a stretch, but some of the other ones I think you'll agree uh, there's a lot of similarities here, which is kind of cool because for the most part, all the covers are actually very well done. I actually really like all of these covers. So the criteria that I'm using for this is, you know, obviously I can go to the young adult genre or even maybe romance and contemporary fiction, that kind of stuff. And they're going to be a lot of covers that share similar themes, similar colors, similar font types, and that sort of thing. I could show you a ton of YA and romance covers that look very, very similar. But the criteria that I'm choosing to stick with today is I have to have read or would read uh, one of the books I'm comparing. So if I'm comparing two books, it means that either I've read one of them or I would read that book. And the one I'm comparing it to, uh, I may not ever read or I may not have any interest in reading, but one of the covers I'm comparing is definitely something that's up my alley. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into some of these because this is kind of fun. The first one I'm going to show you is the one that actually sparked the interest for this video. Um, I was scrolling through and for some reason I came up on a review of a Sarah J Mass book. Now Sarah J Mass is uh, fantasy. Some of it's I think targeted to YA for the most part, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe it's adult. Anyway, Sarah J Mass is not an author that I've tried and, and I don't think she's one that I would try anytime soon. I don't think that I'm necessarily the target demographic for what she writes, but I ended up seeing this cover and it was very reminiscent of a book I just acquired not that long ago. In fact, it was in uh, my last book haul that I did, my only book haul on the channel, which was quite a big one, but it looked an awful lot like one of the books that I got. So the first book is Air of Fire by Sarah J. Mass. Now this is the third book in the Throne of Glass uh, series. The cover that this was very reminiscent of was the Elric Saga Volume 2 that I just got by Michael Moorcock. Check it out. Look at them side by side. Um, they're obviously different, different character on the front, uh, different weapon, different stance, that kind of thing. But they're very, very reminiscent of each other. In fact, even like the font of the author's names are, you know, fairly similar, not identical, obviously, um, but just the vibe that I got in the greens and the whites and the grays and the silver of the hair and, and that kind of stuff, it just, they look so similar. It's kind of crazy. So I really like uh, both of these covers, to be honest with you, and I'm very excited to try the Michael Moorcock books. The, the Elric Saga is something that's been on my uh, radar for a while now. And with these illustrated omnibus editions that have just come out, I think the third one's coming out later this year. Um, I have the first two. I'm very excited to try these. So when I saw that cover from Sarah J Mass, I was like, oh, I... <laughs> That looks an awful lot like that book I just got. So that's what spurred the idea for this video. Now let's get on to the second one. Now the second one is going to be uh, a direct comparison and then a little bit of a stretch. So I'm going to compare three covers right now. So if you know me, you know that I really like John Gwynn and I'm a huge fan of the Fateful and the Fallen series. Well, I also recently read, I actually still have to finish the third book, but I was reading Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn. Now this one is a little bit of a stretch, so give me a little bit of leeway with this one. But if you look at the covers on the Fateful and the Fallen, um, all of them are 
are on these white, gray, silver kind of background. Uh, some of them are colored. I think the trade paperbacks have different colors, but most of them are kind of on this white, gray, silver background, the, the editions that I have at least. And each one has a weapon on the front. Each one has a different weapon on the front. And even if they don't play as important of a role as the weapons that are on the cover of Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, they're still prevalent in the world and they kind of reflect different warrior clans and that kind of thing. But the ones in Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn, I don't want to get into spoilers, but the swords on the cover of these ones actually play a very, very important role in the plot. So these ones are kind of a stretch, but I like to compare them just because I think they're cool covers. They're both series that I've enjoyed so far. Again, I'm just finishing uh, Memory, Sorrow, and Thorn probably in the next month or two. I've just put the third book on hold because it's so big. But Faithful and the Fallen, I love. The covers are awesome. And I want to compare The Faithful and the Fallen to one other book, and that is Cold from the North by D.W. Ross. And it is the first book in the Onyx Born Chronicle. And I I don't know what the other ones look like. I'll probably put them all up here if I can find them. Um, but this is the first book and it looks very, very similar to, I think, Valor. Yeah, very similar to Valor. And they both have this double-bladed kind of bearded axe. Um, the colors on Cold from the North are much more prominent, much more pronounced. But I think this cover is super, super cool. And it was very reminiscent of The Faithful and the Fallen. And if I were to see this in a bookstore, I can easily see someone confusing this book with one of The Faithful and the Fallen books or just appealing to me so much that I would pick it up just on the cover. I think it's incredible. And I would urge you guys to check out this book too. I haven't read it. Uh, it's something that I probably would want to read. And it scores a 4.03 right now on Goodreads with 44 reviews. So it's a good rating. doesn't have a, to a whole lot of reviews. Um, I don't know if this is an indie author or if this is traditional published. I'm not really sure, but I'm going to dig into this one a little bit because I've seen this cover before and I think it's great and um, maybe it's worth a shot. Now, the next one is a little bit of a stretch. I showed one of these books on the book haul video that I did. And when I stumbled across this cover, I realized that it gave me, it doesn't look the same, but it gave me the same kind of vibe, similar colors, just similar vibe. And I think it's quite beautiful as well. So the first book is The Coward by Stephen Arian. And this is the first in the series called Quest for Heroes. I picked this one up. I've seen some uh, reviews on booktube already that say that it's quite good. I'm, I am excited to try this one at some point. The second one comes out eventually this year, I think. I've spoken about this one before. There's uh, some special broken binding editions that are coming out. And so The Coward's been on my radar for a while. And I stumbled across this other cover that gave me very similar vibes and I really really like this cover too and that book is Dance of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson this one has 57,000 ratings on Goodreads and it scores a 4.23 which is very very good this one sounds really cool to be honest and again it doesn't look identical to the coward but they give me the same vibes they both have uh, you know the sword on the front uh, they both have a little bit of gold a little bit of blue the color schemes are obviously a little bit different but I really like both and it makes me want to try this Dance of Thieves book because I'll be honest, I gravitated to The Coward because of the cover. And so, yeah, maybe I'll pick up uh, Dance of Thieves at some point because that one looks pretty cool too. Now, the next one is kind of funny because these two are very, very similar. One is a book that I read that is beloved and is, uh, you know, the first book in one of my favorite series of all time. And the other I have never even really heard of, but I came across this one when I was looking for a couple other covers that look similar. And this one came up and it is Brandon Sanderson's The Final Empire, the first book in the Mistborn series. And then we have The Girl King by Mimi Yu. And this one, again, it looks, if I were to guess, it looks pretty YA, although, um, you know, the cover for Brandon Sanderson looks very similar and looks pretty YA too. And I should also mention that this isn't the UK cover for Mistborn, but it's the, I think, the North American one. So that's the one that I actually have in Canada. If anyone knows anything about this Mimi Yu book, maybe let me know in the comments. It looks kind of YA. I read up a little bit about it. And it sounds kind of cool, to be honest. It looks to be a series, 1900 ratings, 3.57 on Goodreads, not too bad. Um, it's one that I probably wouldn't pick up unless it was recommended to me. But as soon as I saw that cover, I thought, yep, those two look very similar. So let me know what you think about that one. That one's an interesting comparison for sure. Now, the next one's been on my radar for a while and I haven't picked it up yet, um, but it wasn't until my friend Steph started reading it that it moved up on my priority list because she's having a blast with it. I think she's probably finished it by now. But yeah, that is Ninth House by Lee Bardugo. Now I've read the Six of Crows duology and I actually quite liked it. I didn't read the Shadow and Bone trilogy but I did read Six of Crows and again, I, I liked it well enough, but I saw this one and I've heard good things about it. And so I wanted to check it out.
And in browsing for reviews on this book, I came across a bunch of covers that looked kind of similar. And it turned out that the story's kind of funny where I believe the snake used on the cover of this book is actually a stock image. And so there are other books that use the same snake in their covers. So you'll see a lot of covers that use the same uh, graphic. Sometimes it's identical. Sometimes it's changed a little bit, but this is one that, you know, even though the graphic is the same or similar, the covers can sometimes look very, very different. And I think they're all pretty good in their own right. I think Ninth House is getting a new cover. If it hasn't already, I'm not sure. Um, but I actually like the cover. I think it's pretty minimalistic and I don't, I don't really mind it. I think, it, I mean, it doesn't really do too much, but I don't hate it either. Now, the next comparison is one that actually kind of confused me. When I was first starting to look for these books, I ended up coming across the other one and I thought it was part of the one series. So you'll see what I mean in a second. I'm going to put them both up. It's The Live Ship Traders and The Bone Ships. Um, Bone Ships being by R.J. Barker, uh, published in 2019, versus The Live Ship Traders, published in 1998. So when I first saw the bone ships, I was looking for the live ship traders, uh, UK covers, which are these ones that I now have. And I came across the bone ships and I didn't realize right away. I mean, I realized pretty quickly, but I didn't realize right away that this was a totally different book. Obviously it's not by Robin Hobb. And I was like, hang on, is this like, is this part of the same? I had no idea. It was a little bit confusing. Now, what I will say is I really, really like the live ship traders covers, and I actually really like the bone ships as well, but it's, it's very clear that the colors and stuff are very similar as well as the font, which I actually really like. And I believe that it was probably deliberate on the part of RJ Barker's book, uh, the bone ships to appeal to its audience and let them know that this might be a very similar type of book, or at least appeal to very similar tastes. Or, you know, if you like the live ship traders, then you probably probably will like the bone ship. So that's kind of, I think that it conveys that. And I actually really like both covers, to be honest. The bone ships has a 4.09 on Goodreads with about 4,500 ratings, which is actually pretty good. Um, I have heard a little bit of, you know, both sides to it. I've heard some criticisms of it, but overall I think it was pretty well received. So that might be one that I check out in the future too, but definitely live ship traders is priority number one on that side. Now, last but not least, uh, one of these books is one that I know of. The author is pretty involved on Instagram. He just came out, or I think he's coming out with his debut book. I've seen a couple reviews and arcs and things like that going around Instagram. And that is A King's Radiance by L.R. Schultz, Luke Schultz. Um, I've seen him posting about this book. Some people have already read it and really enjoyed it. Um, it has 4.37 on Goodreads with about 54 ratings. It's obviously, I don't even know if it's out yet. I know it's his debut. It may have just come out, but it the cover looks amazing and it sounds pretty cool. I'll let you look that up yourself, but it sounds pretty, pretty neat. And it's one that I was thinking about picking up myself, you know, to start supporting some indie authors. Well, while I was scrolling Bookstagram, I actually ended up uh, that same day finding a cover that looked very, very similar. And that is a book that I don't know anything about. So if you know anything about this book or the author, please let me know. Um, but it has 1,250 ratings on Goodreads with an average rating of 4.29, which is very, very good. And that is The Lost War by Justin Lee Anderson. And that seems to be in a series called Eden and it's Eden or Aiden number one is the book. So yeah, these two have very similar covers. I think they're both really awesome. Anytime you have, you know, a dark cloaked figure walking away from just mayhem or you know fire or an explosion or a building or whatever or like a city it always just kind of looks really cool so I really like both of these it makes me want to read them and it made me realize that I actually don't have a lot of books with this color scheme with the red and black and fire and that kind of stuff like I don't have a whole lot of books that look like these so that's pretty interesting. I'm curious to check these out. I follow uh, Luke uh, Schultz on Instagram. Um, go check him out and support this brand new book. But yeah, the other one I have no idea about, and I'm going to do a little bit of research and see if that might be up my alley as well. But for now, that's all I got, guys. Just a fun comparison with a bunch of books to get some names, some authors and books out there, some potential recommendations, maybe some new books that you haven't heard of, definitely some of them that I haven't come across until now. Um, and so, yeah, I just wanted to show some love for the artwork and the covers that are out there that all, I, all of these look incredible. They're all covers that I like, and they're all books that I think that I would enjoy, except for some of them that are definitely, uh, you know, YA or maybe outside of my typical genres. But anyway, that is it. Uh, no offense intended, just a fun little video. And um, that's it for me. I will catch you guys soon on the next one. Hey.